cake. No, nope, don't run away. Come on, give it a chance. This is a white fruit cake. Unlike the stuff that I knew as a, as a child, it was that dark and molassesy, and I, I don't even know what was in it, but it was black almost, and it just was chock full of fruit. Now, I like the fruit now that I've grown up, but I like a little bit more cake too. And this one is a little bit different, so just bear with me. I'm gonna start off with the flour. This is going to make two fruit cakes. And in my flour, which is three and three quarters of a cup, I'm going to put one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then approximately a half a teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Mmm, smells wonderful. It smells like the holidays already. Cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. Delicious. Let me give that a good mix up. It's fragrant. And we're going to set that aside for a minute. Let's talk about the pans. First of all, I have two pans that are eight and a half by four and a half inches. And I got these at a sale table and I thought they were really cute. So I'm going to use these instead of my glass ones because this way, if I want to give one away, I can just give it in the pan. So we're going to put those aside for the moment. I have two sticks of butter, one cup, four eggs, two cups of sugar, one and three quarters of a cup of plain yogurt. If you don't want to use plain yogurt, you could use vanilla yogurt or lemon yogurt. That's okay too, but I'm using plain. Now let's talk about the fruit. This is my mixture of fruit. In here, I have the traditional red and green cherries. I have some uh, crystallized ginger, which I chopped up fine. I have some dates, which I happen to love which I chopped up also, not fine, just into chunks. And I have some chopped up candied pineapple, which I also like. And then I put in some pistachios and some uh, pecans. What you want is about four cups of mixed fruit. Again, if you don't like some of these, change them up for what you want to put in. You could put in dried cranberries. Oh, I also have some golden raisins in here too. Uh, you can just uh, put in what you want, or leave out what you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quarter cup of flour to that. This is going to keep the fruit from all falling to the bottom of the pan. It kind of helps it suspend it, if you will. So we'll mix that in. And these are what I call almond fruit cakes. And you're saying almonds. She hasn't used any almonds yet. You'll see. Just bear with me. And then I have, I think I'll add it here. You can add it into the batter or add it here. Um, some grated orange rind. that gives it that little bit of tangy zest. Wow, that's fragrant. That's lovely. Again, another holiday smell. Orange, ginger, nutmeg, allspice. And this is to taste as much as you want. That's a snack for later on. Just add that in. Okay, put that aside. Now let's begin with our cake batter. All the butter going in at once. And now I'll start mixing it. And I'll gradually add the sugar. The butter is all sticking to my paddle. I'm going to get that down.
want to get this really well creamed up together. Now I'll start adding the eggs, four eggs. Stop and scrape down the sides because I can see it all not getting blended well. Now I'm going to start at gradually adding the flour, alternating with the um, yogurt. scrape. Some of that stuff is, I got a little bit messy with the yogurt. Back on low. We'll add the rest of the flour. pretty well blended. Get this off. Still haven't gotten the almond, have I? You'll see. It's coming. Hold on, get rid of that. Now, and add this, uh, I think I'll do this, I think it's easier. Now I'm gonna mix it all up. This is going to bake in a really low oven, well, 300 degrees, a lower oven, and it's gonna bake for two and a half to three hours. So low and slow. down to the bottom, up and over. Okay, now give me a minute because I have to go get the almond stuff. So here's the almond stuff, marzipan, almond paste, whatever you want to call it. This is homemade. You can buy it, but if you've watched any of my other videos, I made an apple uh, coffee cake, cake not too long ago where I showed you how to make it. 
So uh, you can actually go to the website and take a look at it and just search for marzipan and it will give you the recipe and how to make it. It's far less expensive than buying it in the store. When you buy it in the store, you will buy a seven ounce tube or a seven ounce can. I think they're both seven ounces. And they're gonna run you anywhere from six to nine dollars each. And for this recipe, you would need two. That's awfully expensive. This cost me probably a quarter of that to make each recipe. So I've saved a lot of money here. This is the traditional almond marzipan used in candy making and whatever. We're gonna make ribbons of marzipan in our pans. But I didn't stop there. I made another kind of marzipan. And this one is made from pistachios. So where I used almonds in this, I used the same amount of pistachios, the same amount of powdered sugar, the same amount of egg white. And then I added a little bit of green food coloring because it was green, but it was a very pale green and I wanted something a little bit more vibrant for the holidays. So there we go. And what I'm gonna do here is I am going to start with my pans and I'm gonna put some of this filling in there. I'm gonna put filling, marzipan, filling, marzipan, filling. So let's go there. don't know how much I need, so I'm going to spread it out kind of thin. A little bit more here. I've been making this particular fruit cake for many, many years, and I really like this recipe. It's, as I said, it's a white fruit cake, so it's not that heavy flavors, it's, it's much nicer, I like it. So I hope you will try it. If you don't wanna do it with the marzipan, you could still make this, but the marzipan really just makes this, just takes it to a whole nother level. So I'll put one one layer of plain, and then one layer of pistachio marzipan. Get this even. Okay, so I'm gonna put these here. Now, I wanna roll these out. I'm not gonna roll them on flour because this is candy and they have confectioner sugar in them. So I'm gonna roll them in confectioner sugar. I'm just gonna sift it so that I don't get lumps in it. So now I want half. This marzipan, if you've never used it or never made it, it's what those little fruits and candies, you know, those fake fruits that you see sometimes decorated on cakes, um, they're made out of marzipan. You can make bonbons out of these, you know, you can make balls out of them and then roll them, uh, cover them in uh, chocolate and you've got a really fantastic dessert. It's a little on the sweet side, but as you can see, I'm rolling this kind of thin. I don't want this to go to the edges, by the way. I want it to be not touching the edges because it could, the marzipan when it gets in the oven could burn if it was too close to the edge. So let's see how we go here. All right, I'm gonna turn that Cut some of that off. I know you can't see it, but all right, here. If you can see this, it is to the edge, but I'm going to push it down and away a little bit. I just don't want it to burn. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now I'll roll the other part and I'll put it in that one. It's very, very easy to make. Again, if you go on our website, search, do in the search box, put in marzipan, and there's a video there of me making it. 
in for another recipe, but you can just skip over that. I'll stop by and see the whole recipe. But uh, And you can see the recipe and how it's made. It's very, 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 very easy. Okay, got that. Now I'm going to put another layer of fruit cake batter on top. Another one. Again, if you were making the candies with the green pistachio fondant, I mean the marzipan, you could really make a really nice bonbon by just rolling those into very small balls, dipping those in maybe white chocolate, and then rolling them in chopped pistachios. Oh, are you kidding? That would be delicious. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, there's the second one. Now we're going to go with the pistachio. This one's got a little bit different texture in it. Now, in the recipe on the website for the almond pistachio, I used almond flour. It, that you can buy in the store. You see it everywhere now. Um, if you don't want to do that and you have a lot of almonds and you want to use those, you can do that. But you really need to grind them very finely in your food processor, the finest you can possibly get them. You don't want them to be chunky. Okay. Okay, and there's that one. And you're going to cut these and you're going to have this ribbon of marzipan throughout it. It's really, people are just going to marvel at a beautiful sight. All the colored fruits and then this wonderful marzipan. And again, if you're not a fruitcake fan, I, I totally understand. People make fun of fruitcakes. They give them as nasty gifts for the holidays. But really, it's, this one's pretty good. All right, now. I think I might even have a little bit extra fruitcake batter left, but that's okay. I'll get one of those mini um, bread pans. I'll make a small one without the marzipan. I'm going to take the leftover pieces of marzipan that I have. I have some more in my refrigerator and I'm going to tint them green to make a decoration for the tops of these afterwards. You don't have to do that. Um, you can actually just maybe put some um, whole pecans and some candy cherries on top with a couple of pistachios. Another thing about these fruitcakes is they freeze beautifully. After they're baked, don't decorate them or anything. Just wrap them tightly and put them in the freezer and they should keep for about three months. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do I'm going to put these in my 300 degree oven for about two and a half to three hours. I'm going to start checking it at an hour and 40. So I'll be back when they're done. Our fruit cakes are done baking, but they're by no means finished. These are very, very hot. I can't do anything with them at this point. These need to cool completely in the pan. You don't turn them out. A lot of times with a cake, you leave it in the pan 10 minutes, take it out. Not with this, you leave these in to completely cool. And when they're cooled, how do you store them? Well, it depends. 
depends on when you're planning on eating them. I'm making these a good month and a half before the holidays, so I'm going to store mine long term. If I was going to eat them in the short term, you need about a week because once these are cool, what you would do is you would get some type of spirits, be it brandy, which is what I am going to use. You could use um, bourbon, I suppose. What you would need is to get some cheesecloth, soak it in the spirits, wrap it twice around the um, cakes, the cooled cakes, then wrap it in plastic and then in foil. And then you would store it in your refrigerator for approximately a week. Every other day, you'd go in, unwrap them, and pour some more uh, spirits on them until they keep soaking it in. Then after a week, they'd be ready to eat. I won't use any of the spirits on mine because I'm going to store them long-term in the freezer. So I don't want to put the alcohol on. When I'm ready to serve them, I'll take them out a week before and I will do that same procedure. Cheesecloth in the alcohol, wrap it in the refrigerator for a week. So that's how you make the cheesecakes that can last this week or long term. Now I have these two and I told you I had a little bit of batter left over. I was able to make one more without the marzipan in a smaller, um, this is one of those paper baking dishes. So this is a really good fruit cake. I will show you what the inside looks like after they've cooled down. I hope you try them and I try to change your mind about fruit cake. Just put in the things that you like and gradually add something new and maybe you'll change your mind.